All right, Erica, artist till death, I hear you. And you challenged me on this, or you called me out on it, either one or both. I'm taking you up on it. My heat gun is ready. My tumbler is ready. We're going to try and do these dragon scales that she did with, with uh, hot glue. All right. So say some kind words to my fingers. Hopefully I don't get singed too bad. But uh, we're going for it. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so my buddy Erica Bauer with Artist Till Death uh, was doing a video and she has seen a tumbler done with hot glue. And they covered it all up and with this technique of using hot glue, they created scales that could be like, you know, mermaid scales or dragon scales or what have you not. And she was giving me a hard time. Her videos are live and I'm a moderator on her channel. And she's like, oh, yeah, Claire will do them. And, you know, she's going to outdo me or so. I don't know. She was pick She started picking on me. And so it's like, you know, why not? Let's go for this. So I've got a tumbler all primed up with uh, just some black flat uh, paint and primer. And it's sitting on top of this little guy here so that I can move it around and work with this. So what the plan is, is I'm thinking of doing uh, like a wide stripe. You can't see. Here we go. Kind of a wide stripe going down here with some larger scales and then filling in the remainder with smaller scales. So it's kind of like the whole theory of belly scales versus body scales, that kind of thing. So, basically, what we're going to do here is you make a dollop of glue and you do up, let me get you in, I'm holding this by my hand here, okay, you do several drops there and you go through with a little plastic um, spoon and smush and drag it. So, that creates kind of a scale-like shape. And then you do series of these and they overlap. So it'll have a little bit of a texture to it. So we're covering our tumbler with this. And I got my computer ready. So I'm going to run some videos in the background and support some of the other artists that I know of that do YouTube uh, videos as well while I work on this. So this is going to be uh, set up as time lapse. And then we'll get to decorating the scales afterwards. Here we go. All right, so I was doing a little bit of a test before I got started here. So I did little drops here real quickly on camera and then I ran my uh, spoon through it. And while I was getting set up with the camera and the tripod, I noticed that these kind of almost leveled out. And I was like, oh, that's not very scale-like. So I thought I'd do a test and let them uh, do another three dots, let them sit for a little bit longer, and then pressed a little firmer into the plate. So it gave that little bit of a like curved higher top to it, thinner bottom. And then I decided to do a really large dot, like if I'm gonna do belly scales, and kind of did the side of the spoon so it had a larger shape to really push that around you can kind of see the um the shape of it a little bit so this is not gonna this is not gonna be a very smooth tumbler as far as like you know all like a nice even plane it is gonna have some bumps to it and i'm just gonna go with that part of it so what i will clean up though is all these little you know spider webby kind of things um and then uh do a couple one or two coats depending on how this works out of resin to so that it feels good with the skin uh as far as holding and such and you can tell i've been spray painting i got a little spot of paint all over me uh, <laughs> so it's, it, it is going to be a little bit bumpy but because it's got a couple layers of resin it'll be um uh, satisfying to the touch 
I think you get my drift. So, yeah. You know, this little hot glue gun, I've had it around forever. I mean, like, at least 20 plus years. So believe it or not, I do have a plan here. I thought it'd be fun on these guys, the really large ones, to add some texture to it and give it so it's not so super smooth. Make it so it looks like it's been, you know, he's been around for a while, you know. Alright, so I have this little guy covered in Texture Wonderland glue. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is just go through and some bald spots or areas that I think need a little bit more. Add just like a little dot of something. And then after that, it has dried really well, meaning gotten to that cloudy state where it's kind of hard rubber. Um, then I'll go and get rid of all these little spaghetti bits, which are everywhere. So... Let me fill in the little dots. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so I kind of plucked off the little bits that were overlapping onto the bottom. And, you know, some of it peels up some of the uh, primer spray. I'm not worried about that because I'm going to put a primer spray on top of this also. So it'll cover up those little bits. So I'm not worried about that. And then any kind of rough edges, literally what I'm doing, and you've probably seen me do this on the uh, time lapse, where I'm using the outside area of the heat gun to actually heat up the glue and just kind of smoothen out those edges a little bit. And so that way it gets nice and smooth and off the bottom. So it'll, you know, lay decently. So next thing I got to deal with is I got to address this tape here. Um, let's see. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking whether or not to do it before I spray or after I spray. Mm. Okay. So I've got my X-Acto knife, got a fresh point on there, super, super, super sharp. Um, but I also have my torch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up this point. And while this point is super, super hot, be careful. Do not go around touching it. I also have some ceramic tiles to put down my X-Acto knife when I get done. But what I'm gonna do is go through and cut, slice through the, uh, the glue with a hot knife peel back some of the tape, rotate, keep going until I'm done, and occasionally heat up, heat up the blade. Shouldn't have to use a ton of pressure. All right, so next day on this guy, I took him outside and gave it a good spray of the black uh, paint and primer and let it dry um, all night long. And now for the fun part. Okay, so I've got this glue here for leafing that I'm going to apply with a brush, uh, probably primarily on like the high points. And then we are gonna be playing around with chameleon flakes here for both the small and the large uh, scales and then I've got some um, copper mica from uh, this is a just resin copper mica that I thought would go uh, really pretty on the the large scales so I'm thinking let's see let me flip them over it's it's interesting it's like certain shifts and you can see that these two have the same color but yet this one has a different combination it's got the reds in there whereas this has blues and a purple in there but it still has that gold shift so that'll be the cool thing about it hopefully ooh, this is a factor i didn't think about I'm, I'm hoping because this is round that light will be hitting it from different angles and you'll get to see all the different colors uh, but I'm hoping that if the light's hitting at the same spot that the little ones don't blend in with the big ones. Hmm, I didn't think about that part. Okay, well, maybe that's where the copper will come into play because I'll be using that on the big ones. Um, and what I might do on the small ones to fill in the gaps, I might uh, fill it in with Grumpy if I wanted to. I'm debating on that part. So, let's get started painting with glue. Don't use your favorite brush, by the way. Use a throwaway brush, one that you're okay with it going bye-bye. And in this case, whoops, I've got an inexpensive brush that I have used with glue before, and it's kind of on the, you can see it's already kind of on the stiff side. Yeah, I'll insert, that's what he said. <laughs> Vamp, if you're watching, I know you're already thinking it. <laughs> She's another moderator on a, a channel that I moderate on, uh, Ours Till Death. So we do that to each other all the time. Anyway, so yeah, uh, always with the glue. Use your um, inexpensive 
brushes. And in this case, since I'm using so much, I'm gonna pour some into this. So that way I'm not leaving this open for too long and um, the top you know, part of it doesn't dry up. So that's one way to make sure that your product stays uh, for as long as possible is if you're using a larger quantity, go ahead and transfer a good amount to this, seal this up, put it away. And then when, if you need to add more, just add more, no problem. And one last thing, I'm gonna do this in stages. I'm gonna do the large scales first apply the adhesive, let it dry, mess with the, uh, the micas and the flakes, and then move on to the uh, smaller ones. Uh, that way it's a little bit easier to manage with me handling uh, the tumbler, you know, and you know, with all that glue and all those micas and such, it just makes it a little bit easier to deal with, so. I wanted to show this at an angle once it finally dried. You see how the glue is really glossy? So you can tell where it has been applied. So that's where I'm gonna be working with the first foil. So there's a step you're not seeing right now, and that is I took this outside with that big fluffy brush that I've been using to apply, and I just just burnished the crud out of the copper and got it in there really, really well. But also took, because there's it doesn't take, I mean, I just barely put like a little bit on my popsicle stick, stuck it in the cup, dipped the brush one time into that cup. Now it's a fluffy brush. And I got all of this copper. So a little goes a long, long way. And you see everywhere where the uh, adhesive was, it definitely picked it up. But I went ahead and burnished it with the remaining that was on the brush all over, getting into the cracks a little bit, but obviously it picked it up on the high points. And so that way it'll have some copper connecting everything. And I put a little bit on the bottom, but you can't really tell too much. But it kind of gives it an antique kind of look in a way on, the, on these areas. But this area here, it's like that copper is super on the shiny side. But you can also see the foil that I put in there before. Now, if I wanted to bump up the foil even more, all you gotta do is reapply adhesive and tack it with a little bit more of the foil. All right, so I took this outside and did some burnishing. Got everything all burnished in real well. And then decided at the last minute that this copper was just too, too bright. So what I did in the little cracks in, let's just put it this way here, right in these areas, uh, I created kind of a black glaze. So basically in the little pot here, I put a whole bunch of the Golden GAC 100, or GAC 100, I call it GAC around here, uh, a whole bunch of that in there, and then just literally one drop of my Golden Fluid, or like a black paint, 
and basically it creates some kind of uh, a clear fluid, uh, or like an extender out there, and it creates a black glaze. So here you saw where I was wiping the brush off. You see how much it's diluted on the side? So it's kind of creates this smoky kind of color. And I just wanted to go and apply it a couple different times in there. And so what I did is I worked it around in these little crevices, I did around the cup, came back around, did kind of like a second coat and hit up in here with some of the other areas just to darken it, to give it that, to help out with the, um, the highs and the lows of the piece. And it makes the highs stand out a little bit better. So that was bugging me some. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight before I resin it, just to, to be safe. And then I'll probably give it a clear coat before I resin it, just to make sure that all the um, uh, flakes stay intact. This guy's coming along very nicely. I may have to do two coats of resin on it just to help out with um, any sharp points. Uh, we'll probably do some sanding after this. Oh so, yeah. Some little scales. Now you guys can explore and have, put your own spin on this. It's something fun to play around with. Oh, this looks so much better after I pulled off the tape. Yes! Cool. Alright, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up, check the links in the description below for my Amazon store as they will have links to different supplies I use. Any of the colors you see that I use in resin, I usually get those from Artist Till Death. And there's also a link for them and there's also a discount code. There you go.